Hello viewers, this is Elim TV. Welcome to Form 2 Chemistry Lesson 5. The topic is Structure of an Atom and Periodic Table. And today we are discussing drive valency and oxidation numbers of an element from atoms. So that is what uh, we are going to discuss in our today's lesson. And um, your teacher, Benjamin K. Makanda. So I hope you are going to enjoy the lesson. Now, we want to begin our lesson by looking at the lesson objectives. And before we go to that, I just want to be sure that we you are following this lesson and you can uh, make your comments by calling our number. You can also use our Facebook page at uh, Facebook page Elim TV. You can also follow us on Twitter at Elim TV underscore KE. So let's look at the specific objective of the lesson. So these are specific objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to predict the valences and the oxidation numbers from position of elements in the periodic table. This is our objective of the day, to predict the valences and the oxidation numbers from the position of elements in the periodic table. Our lesson is going to assume this order, that is our lesson preview. We'll follow this order. We will begin by reviewing lesson 4, review of lesson 4, and in lesson 4 we discussed groups, period, and the periodic table. We also discussed the ion formation. We defined what an ion is, and we defined an ion as a particle formed when an atom of a given element forms a stable configuration by either gaining or losing an electron. What is formed is a positively or negatively charged particle, what we call an, an ion. Therefore, an ion is a charged particle formed when an atom of an element gain or lose electron in order to attain a stable configuration. There are two types of ions. In lesson 4, we discussed two types of ions. The ions can either be cations, you can call them cations, you can also call them anions. Cations are positively, char positively charged particles while anions are negatively charged particles. So, we also say that cations are formed by those atoms of elements that react by losing electrons. So they form positively charged particles, what we call cations. And mostly, metals react by losing electrons because they require less energy to lose electrons than they would require to gain electrons. So in the process of losing electrons, they form cations, which are positively charged particles. On the other hand, Nanometals reacts by gaining electrons because less energy is required for nanometal to gain electrons than losing electrons. And therefore, the resultant particle that is formed is called an ion, which is a negatively charged particle. That basically is what we discussed in lesson number four. Now today, we are going to discuss predicting or to predict the valences and oxidation number of elements in the periodic table. That's our study of the day. Then after that, we are going to have an assignment to help us understand our discussion. Now, to begin our lesson, we are going to have an overview of the demonstration that will help us understand what oxidation is and what the values are as far as our discussion is concerned. Let's have a look at this demonstration. The first things we need to learn in discussing how bonding is going to occur and how we're going to look at oxidation numbers is understand the octet rule. And the octet rule simply states elements will gain or lose electrons in order to obtain a noble gas valence. Now they don't become a noble gas, they just gain or lose electrons in order to obtain a noble gas valence. Now you might be asking yourself, well how do I know whether it gains or loses? Well that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. Remember, it requires energy to gain or lose electrons. And nature moves towards the least resistance because this requires less energy. Nature goes the easiest route. How do we determine whether it gains or loses? Well, that depends. It depends on the nearest noble gas. Remember, they want to be a noble gas or have a noble gas configuration, we should say. And so, it's either going to gain electrons, move up, or it's going to lose electrons to uh, drop down to the nearest noble gas. Let's look at oxygen. There's oxygen on the periodic table. And if you'll notice, 
Oxygen has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, is oxygen going to lose six electrons or gain two? Well, it's easier to gain two. Sodium has one valence electron. Will it gain seven or will it lose one? Well, the easiest thing to do is to lose one. So it's easier to lose one than to gain seven. Make sense? Well, let's take a little test. Gain or lose? Sulfur. Look at your periodic table. Will it gain or lose? Now, I'm not asking you how many, even though you could do that. I'm just asking you, will it gain or lose? And if you look at sulfur on the periodic table, it will gain. Find fluorine, number nine. And you look at it, it will gain. It's easier to gain one than to lose seven. Potassium, gain or lose? Well, it's number 19. Look at it there on the left-hand side. And it's going to be easier to lose one than to gain seven. Argon, neither. Why? Well, because argon is a noble gas, right? Carbon, it could go both ways. With carbon, it could gain four, it could lose four. It depends on what it's bonding with. With carbon, if it's bonding with a metal, more than likely carbon's gaining. If it's uh, bonding with a non-metal, in many cases, it's losing. You have to kind of look at it and weigh in on its electronegativity, which we'll learn about in another lesson. Hydrogen. Well, hydrogen's going to lose. Only has one electron. Uh, it tends to lose, but not always. There are exceptions. When hydrogen bonds with lithium or uh, the other alkali uh, metals, it tends to gain electrons and then has a negative charge. But usually, hydrogen loses. And then calcium, of course, it's going to lose two instead of gaining six. How'd you do? And let's look at oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are directly related to what we just learned. It's the possible charge an atom could obtain by gaining or losing electrons. And remember, electrons are negative, which means then if you gain something negative, you become more negative. If you lose something that is negative, you become less negative or more positive. And we just need to keep, kind of keep that in mind. So lose electrons, positive. Gain electrons, negative. Oxygen. Well, we know that oxygen gains two electrons. We can look at that periodic table. We've already done it uh, earlier in this lesson. Therefore, oxygen's possible charge is two negative, and we would write its anion as such. Also, once you know the charge, you know how many bonds the element is usually going to make. Sodium loses an electron. Therefore, its possible charge is plus one. And there's its cation. It also, sodium has one bond. Review. Elements gain or lose electrons to obtain a noble gas valence. We call that the octet rule. Nature will move toward the least resistance. Uh, that is the easiest path. If an atom loses electrons, it's positive. And if it gains electrons, it's negative. So from our demonstration, we have been able to understand what an octet rule is. We also call it octet configuration, and it is an is a configuration that is achieved when atoms of elements gain or lose electrons. They form a valence or a noble configuration. A noble configuration is a configuration where the outermost energy level has a maximum of eight electrons if it has two energy levels or a maximum of two electrons for the cases where we have one, one, energy, one energy level. Therefore, from that discussion, we can define a valence as a combining power of an element. Valence is just but a combining power of an element. So what's the combining power of sodium, for example, is one plus. The combining power of magnesium is two plus. The combining power of sulfur is two minus and etc, etc. So that's what we call a valence. So let's look at the definition here of the valency. Valences and oxidation numbers of elements. 
So this is how we define a valence. The valence of an atom or ion is the number of electrons it shares, losses or gains in a chemical reaction to become stable. That is the number of bonds it forms with other atoms. So we define a valence as the number of electrons of any given atom or ion that it can share, lose or gain in a chemical reaction to become stable. And this valence can also be defined as the number of bonds it forms with other atoms. How many number of bonds does sodium form with other atoms? Because sodium lose one electron from a stable configuration, then the bond of sodium is one. That bond is the same as the valence of sodium. Magnesium with a configuration of 2 is to 8 is to 2 will have a bond of 2 because it loses 2 electrons to become stable and therefore the valence is 2 and the bond is also 2. Sulfur has a configuration of 2 is to 8 is to 6. From the demonstration, it is easier for sulfur to gain 2 electrons than losing 6 electrons because the energy required to lose 6 electrons is much than the energy required to gain 2. Therefore, the bond of sulfur is 2 and the valence of sulfur is 2. So from that one, we are able now to understand what a valence is. The combining power, which is the same as the number of electrons gained or lost by an atom, in order to obtain an octet configuration of either 8 or 2 for the first energy level, or second and third energy level of 8. That's what we call a valence. Now, we have a summary of a table here that will help us understand what we mean by a valence. So let's have a look at this. We have group, number, and the valence. So elements in group 1, they all have a valence of 1. And group 1 elements include lithium, sodium, and potassium. They have one electron in the outermost energy level. And therefore, they lose that one electron to become stable and form a positive ion. Therefore, because they have one valence electron, so their valence is 1. Group 2 elements, they have a valence of 2. Group 3 elements, they have a valence of 3. Group 4, they have a 4. Then when you go to group 5 elements, it's the other way. Group 5 elements, they don't have a valence of 5, but instead they have a valence of 3. Why? Because they have 5 electrons in the outermost energy level, and yet they don't lose the 5 electrons. They instead gain 3 electrons for them to obtain an octet configuration, to have a, a configuration of 8 in the outermost energy level. Because we have said losing 5 electrons requires a lot of energy than gaining 3. And therefore, gaining 3 electrons, if they gain 3 electrons, then the 3 electrons that are gained are the valency of this element. So, these group 5 elements, because they gain 3 electrons, their valence is not 5 but 3. So, you are able to explain why their valence is 3 but not 5. Because it gains 3 electrons. Group 6 has no valence of 6 but instead 2 because it gains 2 electrons to become stable. Same applies to group 7 which has to gain 1 electron to become stable. What of group 8? Group 8 elements, they are also called group 0 because they neither gain nor lose electrons. They already obey the octet rule. They have a configuration of 2 or 8. For example, normal gases, they have a configuration that obeys actually an octet configuration, they can neither gain nor lose electrons. So they have a valence of zero because they do not gain an electron, they do not lose an electron. So this table here helps us understand what valence is in details. So moving on, we want to look at radicals. So we have just discussed the valence, we also want to look at radicals. They are closely related to, to valence. So what are radicals? These are a group of atoms that are joined together in some particular spatial structure and that take part in most chemical reactions as a single unit. So radicals, they are just arrangements. It's a group of atoms with a net charge on them and they react as a unit. We are just going to look at some of the examples of the radicals. Important inorganic radicals include ammonium and ammonium is made up of nitrogen, hydrogen. We have one nitrogen atom and four hydrogen atoms with a charge of one. So this one becomes a radical. Why are we calling it a group? Because this is a group of two atoms. Huh? Two different atoms. But in, in, the, in, the, in the structure, we have five atoms. One, so why one nitrogen atom and four hydrogen atoms. They add up five. So this one is a group. We also have carbonate. A carbonate atom with oxygen and carbon. So there are four, uh, four atoms here. We have sulfate and phosphate. These are group, a group of atoms that have a net charge and react as a unit. The arrangement of the atoms in this structure are in a special way. So this is what we call 
radicals. Now, if you are to identify the valences of this radical, for example, ammonia, what's the valence of ammonia? Is plus one. What of carbonate? Two minus. What of sulfate? Two minus. What of phosphate? Three minus. That combining power on this group of atoms is what makes their their valence. So these ones are called radicals. So examples of radicals in this chart. We have it here. This gives us an example, a summary of these radicals. So the first one is ammonium. And then you have ammonium, the formula is there. And you say the valence of it is plus one. Then carbonate is two minus. Hydrogen carbonate is minus. Sulfate is two minus. This is a summary of all these radicals. Still on the radicals, this what you can say about radicals. The charge the atom would have in a molecule or an ionic compound if electrons were completely transferred, then we call that one a radical. So that ammonium NH4 plus on top, then that charge forms its valence, and then the combining power on it plus is the valence, while the group itself is called what we call what? We call a radical. Now we have discussed radicals, we have discussed uh, valences. We now have one term that we have to understand here, and this is the oxidation number of radicals. Oxidation number. So we have oxidation numbers of radicals here. So the oxidation number is to the left. We have the na name of the radical, then formula. Now the oxidation number of ammonium is 1 plus. What about the valence of ammonium? Now we have to differentiate between oxidation number and the valence. The oxidation number of ammonium is 1 plus. What about the valence of ammonium? Ammonium has a valence of plus 1. Is it true? Give the difference between the oxidation number and the valence. Oxidation number doesn't have a charge. The valence, oh sorry, the oxidation number have a charge while the valence does not have a charge. So therefore, the oxidation number of ammonia is plus one, while the valence of ammonia is just one. Get the difference. So the valence does not have a charge. Then we have acetate. It has an oxidation number of one minus. We have carbonate two minus. Chromate 2 minus, we have hydrogen carbonate 1 plus, 1 minus, sorry, we have hydroxonium ion 1 plus, hydroxide 1 minus, nitrate 1 minus, peroxide 2 minus, we have phosphate 3 minus, sulfate 2 minus, and sulfate 2 minus. These are the oxidation numbers of these radicals. And point to note, I want to emphasize on this, the oxidation number is different from the from the valence of an element. Sodium has a valence of 1. The oxidation number of sodium is plus 1. While sulfur has a valence of 2, but its oxidation number is minus 2. So note that the oxidation number has a charge, while the valence does not have a charge. That helps you understand this. Now, our discussion has been all about the valence, the radicals, and the oxidation, oxidation number. Up to there, I hope you have understood the lesson, enjoyed the lesson, and now you are in possession to attempt this question that I have prepared for you. Let's look at the question that marks the end for our lesson. And this one is with your assignment. Determine the atomic number mass sorry, of the following elements whose isotropic mixture deco in proportion is given. Element Y, we have the first proportion is 18.36 and has a percentage abundance of 0.34%. Then the next one is 18.38 with a percentage abundance of 0.06% and lastly 18.40Y with the percentage abundance of 99.6%. Explain in this and then give the definition of the term isotope. So you have to work out this problem which will help you understand what we have discussed in our lesson. Now that marks the end to our lesson but for your questions and any concern you can contact us by either making a call. So you can call using this number on the screen 0726842644. So you can call us and we'll respond to your question. You can also use our Facebook page, LM TV, and you can also follow us on Twitter at LM TV underscore KE. That marks the end of our lesson. And I've been your teacher, Benjamin K. Makanda. Until next time. Continue watching the yes. TV.